Hello and welcome to our session. I'm Thomas Seidel and this is Yuri Gerasimov. And um, in the next three quarters of an hour, we'll talk about the new um, search modules for Drupal 7, a search API, and the Fast API. A quick note at the beginning, this is um, aimed at site builders who are new to these modules, haven't done much with them. So if you're an advanced user or a developer, um, this probably won't be. Um, very interesting to you, and you could maybe go to the Birth of a Fezzer sessions um, tomorrow at 3.15 for the Search API. Now that this is out of the way, let's get started. The Search API is a module I started in um, 2010. At that time, there was a groups.drupal.org discussion about um, how we should proceed for Drupal 8 core search, what features it should have, how it should be a flexible framework and not just a product like it is now. And I took all of these suggestions and incorporated as many as possible of them into the Search API module in Contrib for Drupal 7. Um, the basic principle was um, utmost generosity and flexibility. You should be able to um, index all different kinds of data, use any, di any search engine you want, and display the search in any way you like with as little work as possible. And the structure I came up with just a quick overview is um, the centerpiece of configuration is the index or the indexes. Each index contains um, information about what data should be indexed, about a specific set of data, for example, all nodes, and which fields should be indexed how. And this index then uses a server to take care of the actual storage and retrieval of, the, um, of this data. And only this index only contains generic information. All other modules build only on the index and thus are completely um, independent of the server. And you could later, therefore, um, add another server and use that for the index with everything keeping, work, keeping working the same. Um, so now that this is um, explained, let's get started with the tutorial part. I'll explain how you can easily set up a search for your site. The basic uh, things you'll need are a server in the index and some means of displaying the search, a few pages similar. And of course, you can then add <laughs> advanced modules also. So once you've um, installed the Search API module, this is what its um, configuration admin screen looks, will look like. We already have one um, index defined by default, the default node index, which contains um, sensible settings for um, indexing nodes. So now we also need a server. So um, let's create one. We click, of course, add server, enter some name and description. And the only um, important uh, setting here is the service class, which also cannot be changed later. So what is service class? This is the um, representation of what takes actually care of um, storing the index data and later searching it. So it can either use a connection to a solar server or store our data in a database or use a Sapien server or <coughs> whatever. Um, none of these is actually included in the core search API project. So this is another module you'll have to download. And all known um, service classes are linked on the search API project page. Um, so in our case, I've um, downloaded and installed two modules, the database service and the solar service module. And as the form is pretty self-explanatory, we um, use the solo server for this example. So once we select this, we'll get another form for entering the solo server data. 
here um, we have two options for actually um, getting a, a solar server. Either we can install one locally on our own server. Instructions to do so are in the installer text file of the solar module. And if you do this and you're using the example server, the defaults entered in the form will already match. Otherwise, you have to change the port or the path. Otherwise, um, the second option you have is to use a web solar hoster. There are already a number um, of them which support the search API out of the box. And in either case, you'll then um, have to uh, enter the host port and path information to this um, solar server here. Then just create the server and you're done. This is what you should see. The server was created and can be reached. This tells you that you have entered the correct um, server information. And also that it is, of course, running properly. What doesn't tell you is that it's configured correctly. So e either way, whichever variant you use to obtain a solar server, you have to remember to use the um, um, right configure configuration files distributed with the solar module. And now that this is out of the way, uh, we can advance to um, creating the index. Um, for this example, we'll just um, edit the default node index because creating an index basically works the same. You just have to um, select the item type you want to index at the beginning. And so yeah, we click ed edit settings here. And now we can um, change the server to the server just created. And also we take a look at the index items immediately option, which is something you'll want to consider. Um, if you don't activate this, uh, the effect of this setting is that um, items will be indexed right away when they are created or edited. Otherwise, they'll only be indexed at cron runs. If you don't in activate the setting, um, there might be stale data in the index when you edit nodes. And this might even lead to security issues if you're using um, the index data as a, as a source for ac access checks. Uh, also, if you use Search API for um, creating listings of nodes or other items, and users can um, create some items, they would wonder why they don't appear right away in, this list, in these listings. On the other hand, of course, um, indexing items right away leads to a performance impact because indexing batches of items is usually, especially with solar servers, um, more performance than indexing them one at a time. Also, um, this could lead to long waits when a user creates or edits a node, depending on your um, indexing workflow. But for now, um, we assume that we have a small site where this isn't a problem and just activate this, this um, setting. We save, and now because we have set a server, we can also enable the index, which wasn't um, possible previously. Now the um, second form for um, configuration are the fields. Here we have all um, known properties of a node available for indexing, and we can um, select which properties we want to index, um, which data type we want to use for indexing, and there are several available, which are pretty um, self-explanatory, I think, or at least most of them are. It's however important to know the difference between full text fields and string fields. Um, string fields are basically a single token, which isn't um, parsed in any way, just a machine name or something. For example, content type just has a um, string as a machine name. Full text fields, on the other hand, are parsed and processed and can then later be full text searched. So it will be what you want for um, user entered content most of the time. And for full text fields, you can also set a boost, um, which determines the um, relative relevance of this field um, compared to others. So the title will be five times more important than the body text. And then another option you have here is to add the fields of related entities. So here we have um, all entities related to a node available. And we can, for example, add the fields of the author to this form. And now we can also um, index any uh, author fields we want with each node. 
So here we, for example, index the author's name and user roles along with each node. We click Save, and we're done here. Finally, we um, change the workflow settings. These consist of two types of plugins. On the one hand, we have the data alterations, which change what data can be indexed. They can, for example, um, provide additional fields for the node. They can change the um, data type of fields. And they can also completely reject items from being indexed. So you could, for example, use it to build an index with nodes only of a specific content type. On the other hand, we have um, processors, which change how the data is indexed. So they operate on the raw data and making it, for example, lowercase or removing HTML tags. Um, so the indexing workflow then looks as follows on a high level. First, we have just a document, for example, the node with a number of properties. We then execute data alterations on it and have some changed um, document with additional properties and maybe some changed properties. Then we use the field settings to determine which of these properties should be extracted for indexing. We then have uh, just the raw data of these properties. Then we use the processors to further preprocess these um, extracted properties. And finally, we had this, had this data over to the server for indexing. So um, to the workflow settings, there are already a number of each plugin is available with the core search API module. Uh, one important uh, one here is the node access uh, data alteration. This um, has the effect of automatically um, adding node access filters to your search queries, which is especially useful if you're using um, complex access systems. Otherwise, you can just filter by the published state. Or if you're using um, search pages wh where you can't uh, just um, add a filter. But um, you should, in any way, keep in mind uh, what I said previously about the index items immediately setting. Because if this isn't enabled and you use the node access data alteration, you can, um, this could le lead to leaks when um, the latest version of a node isn't yet indexed. And so again, we uh, activate this to be on the safe side. And for the processes, it's just um, important to remember that when you're using a solar server, you shouldn't use any of the standard pre -pro uh, processors because solar already does its own pre-processing and will just get irritated. So we deactivate all of these and <coughs> save the configuration. And this already concludes the um, basic configuration of the index. We now just go to the status page and index the content. And we're finished. We now have a fully functional and uh, up-to-date index. Now we just have to um, use, uh, create some way of, for the user to actually use the search. We have two um, basic ways of doing this. First, there are search views, which is a module distributed with the search API project. And adds, uh, that adds views integration for the search API. So you can um, uh, create views on the on search API indexes using filters, contextual filters, sorting, and the whole range of display um, options available with uh, views for search API searches. And the second option are search pages, which are a simpler way uh, of um, displaying searches, just giving you a normal search um, form. But uh, yeah, these are a simpler way to do this, although less powerful. So um, as search pages are um, not that hard, we'll use a search view here and show you how this works. We um, go, of course, to the views um, admin page, uh, add a new view. And as the item type here, we um, use the name of the index we just created or edited in our case. If you use search index, it will just give you a listing of all search indexes. This is a common pitfall. So um, we use the default node index, edit it. And yeah, this is the normal views UI, of course. 
uh, for our example, we just use a table for uh, viewing the search results, adding a few um, fields, and I also added a relationship to the author here to um, uh, include the author name in this listing. Um, then we add the filter, add some filter criteria, which is really um, where the, which is really the core of the views integration of Search API, because here you have all um, indexed fields available as filters, and you can, for example, um, give the user to op the option to filter by content type or filter yourself, of course, and you can uh, use an additional filter, the search full text search filter to um, expose a full text search field to the user, which then can uh, search through several fields at once or even all of them. Um, we apply, uh, of course, we set both of these um, as exposed and we also make sure that the uh, search key is, uh, this option is, um, remains at the default of search keys because otherwise um, entering multiple words won't work as expected. So um, we ju now just save the settings and view the page. And th this is what, we will, what you'll get. You get a, um, first you'll only get the listing of all existing nodes, but then you can enter some uh, keywords, maybe a, a content type and execute the search. And then you get a list of search results sorted by um, relevance by default. Uh, as you can see, um, the results with Macdo in the title are at the, at the top. And, but you can also uh, sort by other fields by, by click sort. For example, here we um, sort by the author's name. And the only thing you have to remember um, regarding sorting is that multi-valid and full text fields cannot be used for sorting due to um, technical restriction. And I will be talking about facets for the search API and actually facets generally for the search of for Drupal. So, and this is mostly applicable for Apache Solar. So, uh, when we are trying to like understand what our clients wants in terms of building search pages, uh, we usually get some forms with filters, or nowadays we are also getting facets. So, facets are the links when we have results of the items and we have number of results that will be the number of results if we will click on that link so it's like we have articles and we have different authors on these articles and we will we would like to show how we can make user to limit the search results by the author and actually historically it was not like this all the time and uh, there were the cases like we had usual search form and then we had nice link to advanced form and when we click there we get to the form like like this with plenty of fields different select boxes any variants you can think of and the problem was that if we type data there and we click search well sometimes you don't know whether you will get results at all or not and uh, that's very bad in terms of user experience because if you like trying to find shops of electronics that are located in some specific area that sells some specific telephone for example when you're trying to go through all these forms you can spend really a lot of time trying to get the conf combination of the fields that will lead you to the item that you're trying to find so nowadays things really changed a lot like you can see how Google works, for example. You can see how other search engines, you just have text field with semantics, and when you get the results, you have links on like left side or right side where you can understand that you can limit your results to some criteria. So you go not from very precise tries to get the item you're looking for, but you start from very general. You start typing like shop, and then you see the items that can limit your search with like city name, product categories, anything. But you already know exactly that when you will click on this link, when it will limit your search results, you will have them. That's the biggest improvements in terms of search usability. And this is where facets coming in. Because 
Uh, Apache Solar is great search engine that works separately from Drupal. We index the nodes, the content there, we get results. But with the results, we also get these facets that are actually uh, variants of the links and the number of results that we will get very nice UI from. And these are like usual results that you can find in a lot of websites nowadays. For example, if you go to drupal.org and you're trying to search something, you can see that in your search results you have modules, themes, documentations, like on that left side slide. So you understand that if you are looking for the module, you can find like 982 modules with these search results. Or for like much better ex um, example is on the right side where we are shopping and there are a lot of different criteria of these items. So we're trying to find shoes and also we find different types of shoes, sizes, colors, brands, anything. And you can imagine how huge this form would be if we are getting on that previous experience, like all brands, all sizes, all colors, and different types of shoes can have like different types of criteria at all, and some of them are not applicable to each other. Like if we will think about selling electronics, we can have, we can sell laptops and refrigerators, right? So. And criteria of the laptops, like diagonal processor memory, is not applicable to refrigerators at all. So uh, it, it's much better when we use facets in terms of we know exactly that user is looking for laptops. So we do not bother him with all other criteria at all. And we get the results exactly for laptops. So this is where facets are really good. And this is what I would like to talk to you. How to implement them on your search results. So Facet API is separate contrib module uh, that was originally written by Chris Pliakas, I think this is how it sounds his second name. And what he did, he originally developed it for Apache Solar module, and then it became standard for search API module as well. So now it's a very great thing about Facet API that it works with different modules, so you're not going to have different variations of user interface. And when you learn it once, you know that you can implement it on different platforms. So um, on the one side, you can do a lot of things with user interface. And on the other side, you have very nice developer experience if you will try to extend this functionality. So let's see what we get out of box. Um, out of box, we have display widgets. Uh, display widgets, it's how our links, are, I mean these facet blocks are displayed. Like on this left sidebar, you can see that one block is the links, like this, I think, anonymous or admin. Uh, these are links with checkboxes. You can choose them in settings of the block. And then you have simple links. And then you can also have select box. Actually, select box is facet API bonus module that extends this functionality. So you can write your own widgets. Maybe you want to have some graphics there or some fancy, I don't know, flash application, whatever you can think of or your client wish to, you can implement on display widget in terms of displaying them. Uh, then you can have your custom sorts of the facet links. This is very handy thing when you have requirements to display them in not like alphabetic order or you want to have them sorted by count or maybe your client will say that we have special partnership with Samsung company and we want Samsung always at the top and this is how you can do this. You just go to the, you can use source plugins, you can write your own small plugin, it will be like 10 lines of code or you, you have plenty of them by default. So it's very easy to extend very nice to use, and this functionality is already in facet, in facet API itself. And then you have very nice functionality that sounds like dependencies. And the idea for dependencies is when you do a search to Apache Solar, you get, and you explicitly tell to you that I want facets for like 
all this bunch of different types of assets, like author, content type, anything, all attributes. And sometimes it's not reasonable to show all of them. Uh, or for example, you want to make, well, make some money of it, so you say to users, okay, this is like usual search, but if you register and pay some money, you will have much more possibilities and things like that. So you customize what blocks to show and which not to show. And this is where dependencies come in place. So by default, you can have different visibility settings for the roles, for the bundles. And bundles means content types. And um, like Facet uh, API bonus module also gives you possibility to um, have dependent facets. Uh, that means like same example with uh, shop of electronics. When you type Samsung, you will get a lot of different products of Samsung. But in, when you type, when you get to laptops, you can show all these facets about only laptops. But you don't want them to be shown when you only restrict to Samsung. So you can specifically type like, I want this facet only shown when on other facet value is selected. So in this way, you can control that user will not have 20 facet blocks at the same time, and he will get them eventually when he narrow his search results. This is a very handy thing. And uh, of course, you can have filters. Uh, filters on facet means that when you get these links, you can also take some off the list. And there are plenty of them by default. Like you can show in the facet block the active link, or you can hide it, or you can show only some specific items, or you can exclude specific items, or you can narrow this one I really like. Like, um, if you have the facet in a lot of mm, like values, like maybe 20 of them, you don't want to show all 20, uh, but you want to show only the items that have at least like 10 results. So this already is there, so you just enable the module, get this checkbox and you get this experience for your users. And uh, another thing that is very good standard for search modules is current search block. Uh, what it does is when you narrow your search results, you want to keep tracking what actually clicked. So you have possibility to go back and you don't want to, you have, it's like on search results, you see what you typed, what facets you activated. So, and also you can change the order and you can also write your own plugins for that system so you can display them differently depending on what results you get. So you can go wild on that part as well. And after enabling, uh, I think, yeah, let's, let's so much do. Now so that we've um, heard these um, general um, explanations, let's um, see how, the, how this works in our example. We go to, uh, for the search API, in this case, of course, we um, go to the facets tab of the index, and here we have all um, index fields available as possible facets. We can now, for example, um, activate three of, the, three of these, the content type, the creation date, and the author. We just save the configuration now, um, get a reminder to go to the blocks page and actually um, enable these blocks. Um, we move them to the right sidebar, uh, also activate the current search block, as explained earlier, and save these settings. And now our example search looks like this. Uh, on the top we have the, of the right column, we have the current search block, as explained earlier, telling us how many results we had and what we searched for. And then we have three blocks with um, facet filters. And we can now, for example, filter by this author and only get the search results for the search that were um, created by this author. Another thing we can do, no, can do now is um, change these facets to uh, or facets. We just go to the um, facet display configuration set uh, screen, use the links with checkboxes display widget and change the operator to or. And when we save now, um, we get a chance to um, specify more than one author. And um, now we get results by either of these two users. Um, 
So um, this gives us another, um, uh, another uh, source of flexibility. So um, this were a uh, facet configuration. One thing to keep in mind for this is that um, facets currently only work with the database and the solar backend, as far as I'm aware of. And our facets even only work with solar, although uh, it is in planning and work for um, the database backend as well. So now that we have added uh, facets, what other um, simple improvements can we make? I'd like to um, present uh, two additional modules for that. First, there's the Search API autocomplete module. This adds um, autocompletion for full text um, input fields, as of course uh, known from Google, for example. This um, currently works for both views and pages. And, uh, but only uh, works with solar at the moment. Now, um, once we have activated this module, how would we um, go about uh, using it? We go to the index um, autocomplete tab. Then we have just a listing of all uh, known searches for this index. In our case, just our test view. We activate this and click save and that's it. Now our search looks like this and once we add uh, we enter some uh, letters, we get automatic uh, suggestions of how we want to complete this, whereas it will all um, return results. And you can also, in the settings for this auto-completion search, um, select that the number of results for these um, suggestions will be displayed as well. Um, so this is one uh, simple improvement. Another one is the Search API spell check module. As the name uh, suggests, this um, adds um, spell check corrections to your uh, searches, as also known from Google, where Google will um, display, did you mean blah, when it thinks you've misspelled some word. This, uh, again, works with both views and pages, and also currently only works with solar. Um, so this is a bit different to configure, for search pages, you'd just um, go to the search page settings and um, activate this setting, use spell check. For views, you go to the view, um, click uh, add a header or a footer, and there you have the option of um, adding the spell check header or footer. So once we've added this, and go to our search page and enter some incorrect word, of course, it, now both words are garbage because this is just sample data, but in our case, Met Metco would be uh, wrong and Mecto would be the right uh, search. So um, this is another simple improvement for your searches, and there are also other projects giving you um, sim uh, simple benefits as well listed on the Search by Project page or linked there. And now I just want to um, quickly go over one uh, frequently asked question I was asked to explain here, namely uh, a comparison of the two available solar modules or the two um, popular solar modules, namely Search API Solar on one hand and the Apache Solar Search Integration module on the other hand. Um, of course, the Search API, as explained, has the advantage of being very flexible. You can easily configure um, things right down into the details and also have a whole range of data you can index. All entities are supported by default. Whereas with Apache Solar module, this is more optimized for a standard use case of indexing nodes, which it can do very well. But if you want to index other entities, you have to um, activate or even write additional modules. And also, if you want to um, further uh, specify the details of how things are indexed or what is indexed, you also have to write code. Um, one option, uh, one advantage of the Search API is that you can easily switch backends. Of course, if you are, um, if you want to use Solar in any case, this doesn't really, is a, this isn't really a benefit. But you still can use the database backend for testing things first and then later switching to solar. What um, the Apache Solar module does very well is multi-site searches, which um, support for which currently lacks in the Search API, at least out of the box. 
For this, you'd have to program th some things. Search API, on the other hand, has better fuse integration. The Apache Soul module has fuse integration as well, but it's not as refined yet. One strong point, though, for the Apache Solar module is that it is available for Drupal 6. So if you're using that, um, Search API isn't an option in any case. Um, the bottom line is just uh, try out both modules and see what uh, fits best for your needs. And yeah, this um, about ends our presentation. Just a quick reminder for any advanced users who um, might have listened. Uh, there's a search by Birds of Fellow session tomorrow at 3.15 in the Chamonix room, which I think is in the um, basement of uh, the uh, um, other hotel. Western Grand, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, thank you very much. Now, are there any questions? Um, please use the mic and get in line there, I think. OK, hi. Um, two very small questions. First, uh, you say that for non uh, node entities, uh, we need an extra module. Uh, is, is it a, a module that a any non-node non entities is working with? I mean, I'm creating my own entities. Uh, can I use it? No, um, if you're using the Apache Solar Search Integration module, um, you'll have to enable one module for each type of entity you want to index aside from nodes. So there's, there's a user search module, which allows you to search the users, okay. and a few other, uh, one for, for taxonomy terms. And if you are using your own entity, you'll also have to write your own Apache Solar Integration module so you can search through these entities. OK, so that's clear. And uh, what about open search? Is there anything ready for open search or in the coming months? Uh, sorry? Open search, you know, just uh, you compatibility with the search you've got in the, in the, pro in the browser. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, if you use Google you, or Wikipedia, you can, you can use the search form in oh. the browser. Oh, okay. And the, the open search uh, protocol. Um, I guess this would have to um, done on a per site base. Because th there have been done things done for Drupal six, but I've n I didn't see anything uh, mature for Drupal seven. So uh, if you heard about, uh, no, I don't know of any module that does this. Sorry. Okay, thanks a lot. The um, solar search integration module has out of the box um, highlighting of search words in the in the results. Uh, yeah, Is search API for solar also does this. Search API for solar. I haven't looked uh, long enough. Thank you. Um, the results of the autocomplete can this be mm, come out of a view? No. <laughs> <laughs> these okay. um, these come from uh, the solar server, so um, using a view to um, get these results would be something entirely different. You could you would have to write another module for that. Okay. It's an entirely different use case. Uh, is there any pos uh, possibility to uh, have a, a search block form uh, like the older search? You ha you normally, in the, in the normal search module, you have a search block form for your, your site without a search page. You mean um, with the different tabs for the different searches? No, no. Uh, you in, in Drupal, you have a, a, a small search form, and uh, you can put... Oh, a, a in search block? Yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's available for the search pages module by default. And, and for search views? <laughs> for views, you can use the block um, display, but I mean, not not display, but um, display. Oh, display. Um, but but yeah, you can you you can use this, but I've run into problems because it kind of doesn't allow you to um, 
you have to write one line of code that tells you it can use um, exposed filters, although it doesn't use Ajax in the block. It's a bit complicated, but okay. um, basically it's not possible out of the box, but very simply. Okay, thanks. I have a question about uh, hierarchical taxonomies and how they're searched and, and indexed. Um, so the scenario is you have a hierarchical taxonomy based on location and you have, uh, let's say, Germany as a parent and Munich as a subterm um, related. So in terms of both full text search and filtering, what happens when I type in Munich as a term? Um, will it also display all the results from Germany with, with either facets or search API? How will that be processed? Um, uh, this, this depends why would you use um, full text search to search for that, I mean. Because the user's lazy. <laughs> so they type in Munich and they maybe the first few results should be about Munich and then the rest should be about Germany. Is that possible? Uh. I, I can answer. I, I just had the case quite similar to this one. And actually what we have done when we were indexing, like for your use case, if you want like Munich results first and then Germany like beneath, what you can do, you can index your term of Munich as one field, and then you look at the parent, Germany, as the second field. And then uh, when you type Munich or you type like Germany, anything, you have both terms in your item. So items, when they are, when you type, when you type Munich, you can like, you can alter your query to add some results, you can, um, add more terms related to Munich. So, um, when when you type Germany, for example, you can alter a query to add some CT highlighting, and you can you can do very different things with uh, Apache Solar on this term. So, and actually, you can also recognize that Munich is in Germany and do two queries in in this case. So, you can do a query to get the results of the Munich, and then you can do another query to get uh, Germany. But it's really very custom. I mean, you will need to code something, or you need to build several views, so... But it's definitely achievable. It's not something that is not possible. In terms of also then the Facet API, API um, is that functioning? Uh, with Facets API, there is one thing that Facets, they are built on one search. So if you, for example, will go for two search results, I mean, do, doing two, two, two queries to Apache Solar, you will still need to choose what query to use for your Facets. But if you're um, talking about just uh, hierarchical Facets, then this perfectly works for taxonomy terms. So you'll get um, first only the countries in your example, and when you click Germany, it'll have a pop-up of all the cities for which there are results. Cool, thanks. And Facets API, they also have displaying facets as hierarchical. So you will see items um, and their levels. It's very convenient. You, you should really play with it, and <laughs> you will find very nice things there already. <laughs> Uh, hello, I'm the author of two modules on Drupal.org, uh, Apache Solar f File and Apache Solar User. Uh, to be frankly, I'm not satisfied to uh, use Apache Solar or Search API. <laughs> so, but for developers like me, I have to think about that Acquia is behind Apache Solar, and they put a, a lot of uh, power to support that. So. I'm working mainly on Apache Solar, but I, I want to know, is there any plan in the future? Maybe we can join force to have a unified search API in Drupal 8. Do you have any s thought about that? No, there are no concrete plans for that. Well, the, right now I got a, uh, my main issue is about the file entity. To search file entity, I need to pass the document like a Word PDF. Uh, I think neither Apache Solar or Search API provide a good, good interface for such functions. Do you have any thought about that? Um, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, for
for the Acquia thing, uh, the matter is that they not fully support config files of Search API Solar module. So the difference is that you cannot enable Search API, for example, for Acquia hosting, that config files are really tied to Apache Solar module. But there are some, I think, Chris developed some things like unifying config files, trying to do that so they can run also Search API Solar there. But also, I think it's not possible to upload um, custom configurations. Yeah, you cannot. But uh, no, uh, I, you can't. Oh, okay. I heard. Hey, well, um, the matter is, they there are things that trying to unite them, but it's not there yet. So well, and the schema is uh, one issue. Another issue is that they have many developers working on Apache Solar. So I feel that uh, th their part is more. Man well maintained, and if I got the issue, I can find that they fix that very quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but it's the matter of community, actually. I mean, yes, there will be one, two developers full time involved in this project, but community is much more than that. So, anyway, can go other directions, and we never know who will. S it's not being survived, but it's good sometimes to have competition as well. Thank you. Do um, Search API and Facet API support geo searching? <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> search API, um, there is already a Search API allocation module, which um, at the moment works with patching the Solar module. But I plan to work on uh, bringing this into the Solar module itself and um, yeah, improving this. so. Soon, it will, there will be um, great location searches in Search API, and now there are location searches in Search API. But um, they are also, uh, already look quite nice, so this is possible. And for Facet API, I don't think there's... History. Well, Facet API is not functionality for geolocation, it's just displaying facets. And for the... Yes. Yeah. Sorry? Yes, yes, but uh, the matter is using functionality of the solar. There is actually modules for Apache Solar in Sandbox, and I know that Nick worked on the code sprint yesterday on also trying to implement some functionality. So the things are moving on both sides. It's just a matter of which one to choose, as usual. Thank you. <laughs> um. When I define a search index, I have to choose uh, the entity type. And also on the view, I have only the chance to choose one index. Is there a possibility to search over two indexes at the same time? Yes, there is the search by multi-index search module, which does exactly that. If you have more indexes lying on one solar server, you can um, search all of them at once, although I don't know how um, working this is at the moment, but if you have any issues, just um, yeah, go to the issue queue and I'll fix them. Okay, thank you. I want to try. <laughs> uh, I believe I'm right in saying that the Apache Solar Search module, which the, the other one um, does out of the box, it will return results where it not only highlights the results, but it also does a fuzzy search. So like if you search for house, you'll get housing, even though housing is not, uh, even though house is not a substring of housing, because obviously the E for the I. Um, does, so can you do that in Search API, basically? Not out of the box, no. You'd have to um, modify the um, configuration files for that. Because obviously you've got the, um, uh, the alternative spellings, which is basically the same sort of concept, isn't it, where it will tell you the alternative spelling, but with the, out of the box, the other one actually highlights and returns results straight away on the first go. Um, yeah, no, um, Search Bay doesn't do, the, doesn't do this by default at the moment. Right. Is, it, is there any way to configure it so that it does? Um, not in the UI, but um, with the configuration files of Solar, it's um, perfectly possible, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you.